Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a radical expression. We are given that x plus 2 times the square root of x is equal to 2, and we're supposed to evaluate x plus 4 over square root of x. I'll be presenting two methods, and we'll talk about a couple of interesting things. And at the end, I'm going to show you a graph. So let's go ahead and start with the first method. Make sure to pay attention to the results because we're going to compare them. All right, so for my first method, I'm going to start with the original equation, x plus 2 root x equals 2. And then I'm going to isolate the radical, 2 root x equals 2 minus x. With most radical equations, we, you know, square both sides. That makes sense. Let's go ahead and do it here. This gives us 4x equals 2x, 2 minus x quantity squared, which can be written as 4 minus 4x plus x squared. Unfortunately, the 4x doesn't cancel out. Let's go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side and then put that on the left-hand side. So in other words, subtract 4x. That gives us x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation. It's not factorable, but we can solve it using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which is 8 plus minus the square root of 8 squared, which is 64, minus 4 times 4 times 1, which is 16. And that is divided by 2 times 1. 16 times 16, uh, subtracted from 64, 64 minus 16 is 48, so let's go ahead and write it as square root of 48. And since 48 can be written as 16 times 3, when you take the square roots, it's just going to be 4 root 3. And now we can divide everything in the numerator by 2. So x gives us 4 plus minus 2 root 3. So those are the two solutions. So at this point, you might be asking, which one are we going to use? And here's one thing we need to check. The domain of the original equation requires x uh, to be greater or equal to 0. So x needs to be greater than or equal to 0. Obviously, we do know that x is not going to be 0 because 0 doesn't satisfy, so we can safely say that x must be positive. When you check both of these roots, like 4 minus 2 root 3 and 4 plus 2 root 3, you're going to notice that they're both positive because 2 root 3 is less than 4. Why? Because <laughs> root 3 is less than 2, that's why. It's about 1.7-ish, right? So they're both positive, so how about using this one? Well, that one is more positive, right? Kind of like Animal Farm. All animals are equal. All numbers are equal, but some are more equal than others. Anyways, 4 plus 2 root 3. So we're going to do the following. We solve the equation, and then we're supposed to evaluate this. So let's go ahead and substitute the x value that we found. So I replace x with 4 plus 2 root 3 everywhere. Now you have to take the square root of 4 plus 2 root 3. That's not too hard if you especially if you know that uh, you can kind of find two numbers whose product is 3 and whose sum is 4 and those numbers are 3 and 1. So this can be easily written as the square root of 3 plus 1. Now why does that happen? Because if you square root 3 plus 1 you get 4 plus 2 root 3. You can go ahead and simplify it very easy. So this becomes 4 plus 2 root 3 plus 4 divided by square root of 3 plus 1, which is the square root of 4 plus 2 root 3. All right? Now, let's go ahead and simplify this by using conjugates. Let's go ahead and multiply this by root 3 minus 1 and root 3 minus 1. Now, when you do that, you're going to get 4 plus 2 root 3 plus 4 times root 3 minus 1. You can kind of like, not dis don't distribu distribute it because it's going to simplify. This times that is from difference of two squares, 2. Now, 2 goes into 4 2 times. So this gives us 4 plus 2 root 3 plus, if you distribute the 2, 2 root 3 minus 2. And 4 minus 2 becomes 2 and then we get 2 plus 4 root 3 as the answer. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So this is what we got for the answer. 
second method and pay attention to the second method because you're going to see something interesting. Okay, so the second method involves the following. Let me go ahead and rewrite the original problem. We're given this and we need to find this one. Okay, so here's how the second method works. We're going to set 2 equal to x plus 2 root x because that's what it is. I just switch sides and then I'm just going to double both sides, multiply by 2. That gives, my, that gives us 4 equals 2x plus 4 root x. Now, why did I do that? There's a good reason. I'm going to go ahead and substitute that here. Make sense? Because in the expression that we're trying to evaluate, we have a 4. So most of the time we replace variables with numbers, but this time we're going to do the opposite. So x plus 4 over square root of x equals x plus, we're going to replace the 4 with 2x plus 4 root x, and then the square root of x is going to stay the same. And let's go ahead and simplify this. To simplify this, I'm going to factor out a square root of x in the numerator. That gives us 2 times the square root of x plus 4, and that is divided by square root of x. Square root of x cancels out. Nice. We know that x does not equal 0. So from here we get x plus 2 times square root of x plus 4, because th there's a 1 here, so we don't have to worry about it. Well, wait a minute. We were trying to evaluate this, and we ended up getting the expression that was given to us as 2. So we do know that x plus 2 root x is equal to 2, so this is equal to 2, but 2 plus 4 is equal to 6, so the answer must be 6. Wait a minute, why are the answers different? Okay, let's go back to the first method, and with the first method we got 2 plus 4 root 3, but now we got 6. Is that possible? Here's the reason why they're different. Remember, with the first method, we found x equals 4 plus root 3. Or we found two solutions, but we used the positive one, right? So we used x equals 4 plus 2 root 3, but that doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because if you replace x with this in the original equation, so this is our original equation, remember? If you replace x with that, you get 4 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 times the square root of 4 plus 2 root 3, which can be written as 4 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 times root 3 plus 1. Remember, that's the square root. And then from here, to keep a long story short, you get 6 plus 4 root 3. So that's not equal to 2 by any means, right? There's no way they're equal. So the problem comes from the fact that we were squaring both sides. We're introducing extraneous problem. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. Okay, so the issue comes from the fact that we, you know, we start with this and then we square both sides and we introduce extraneous solutions. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Instead of using x equals 4 plus 2 root 3, we are going to use the other root, x equals 4 minus 2 root 3. If you introduce that into the expression x plus 4 over root x, you're going to get the following, 4 minus 2 root 3 plus 4 over the square root of 4 minus 2 root 3, 4 minus 2 root 3 plus 4 over root 3 minus 1, just easy to you know, square root, just like the other one, 4 minus 2 root 3 plus 4 times root 3 plus 1 over 2, remember the story, and then we get 4 minus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 2, 2 root 3s cancel out, and we end up with 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6. We got the right answer with the right approach. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. I graphed the radical function for you, and then intersection point is at 4 minus 2 root 3, as we verified. And it's about 0 0.535898 something something. But here's the thing. This is kind of like half of a parabola because if you isolate this, right, and uh, actually kind of square both sides, you're going to get some terms and you can turn this into a parabola. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.